right, so we're looking at sum and difference. Formulas. And if by the end of class, uh, you want me to check, um, you know, you thought of some problems, you want me to go back over, you know, from last class, uh, let me know if we can do that. Because like I said, this section, at least I think it's short. We'll see, we'll see. All right, so some and difference formulas. I want to write cosine. All right, so initially we'll just look at one at a time and then we'll get all of them listed out. But first one we're looking at is the cosine of the difference of two angles. So the little fish down there is alpha and uh, kind of like a B is beta. So that's cosine of alpha minus beta is gonna be equal to cosine of alpha times cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So they ask us to find the exact value of the cosine of 15 degrees. So what we can do is look at cosine of 15 degrees as a cosine of 65 minus 45. Um, yeah, let's do it that way. All right, 65 minus 45. No. Not 65, sorry, 60 minus 45. Yeah. So that will set us up to use a formula we just uh, introduced. And those are familiar angles, so that's why we will use, I keep putting 65. Uh, that's why we will use 60 and 45. So we're looking at cosine of 60 degrees, cosine 45 degrees. I thought I'd give myself room. Just give myself more room, that's all. That's cosine 65. Dang, I keep putting 65. Why? Wow. <laughs> 60 degrees. Cosine 45 degrees. And that's plus sine of 60 degrees, sine of 45 degrees. All right. Cosine of 60 degrees is one half. Cosine of 45 degrees, square root of two over two. Sine of 60 degrees, square root of three over two. Sine of 45 degrees, square root of two over two. Multiply those, you get two square root of four plus square root of six, I said two square root of four, square root of two over four, plus square root of six over four. And the best we could do with this is bring it together this way. 
as far as simplifying is concerned. And that's it. All right. Um, questions before we look at the next one. What would happen if the square root value had to multiply to a a real number? Um. So in other words, if we had the square root of thirty six here, or something like that, then that would have just been square root of six. Square root thirty six would have just been six. And uh, this would have just been it. I mean, there's nothing else you can do because we have this radical right here that prevents us from adding it to the six. So. Okay. So would there ever be a point if, so if that was only the square root of two plus six, Square root of two plus six. Yeah, if that if that radical wasn't there, right? It was thirty square root of thirty six. You bring down a six. Mm -hmm. Would there ever be a point where, to simplify, you would add those to get a whole a whole number and then go or no? So you're saying if you ended up, I didn't need to write that. You said square root of two plus six over plus six over four. Yeah. So as far as adding this, there's no way to simplify this any further without turning it into a decimal. Okay. And, and if we turn it to a decimal, then we're gonna have to round, but they wanted the exact value. Okay. <clears throat> so we would just leave it like that. And these, um, this one half square root of two over two, square root of three over two, square root of two over two, that comes from that unit circle. Uh, you can get those coordinates from there. Remember, um, cosine is X. You know, we talked about that cosine is X. So these are your X values. Uh, or x coordinates of 60 degrees and 45 degrees. And these are the y coordinates of your 60 degrees and 45 degrees. So cosine is x, sine is y. So it finds that value of All right, so this time they want us to go in reverse as far as that uh, cosine of difference of angles. So before we had one angle, we broke it up and expanded it out. This time we have our two angles and we want to condense it. And we recognize that it fits this formula of cosine alpha, cosine beta plus sine alpha, sine beta. So, you know, 80 degrees will be my alpha and 20 degrees will be your beta. You know? So that means uh, I can break it down into cosine 80 degrees minus 20 degrees, which would be cosine of 60 degrees. And that would be one half.
right, so here we have another one of uh, those verifying situations. Wherein um, we want to make one side look like the left, uh, make, make it look like the other side. Here we have the cosine of the difference of two angles. So we can expand that. Cosine alpha, cosine beta, plus sine alpha, sine beta. And that's still over sine alpha, cosine. Uh, both of them alpha, that should be beta. I'm sorry, that should be a cosine beta at bottom. So now I want to break this up because you know we have two terms over here. So if I break this up, I may be able to get my two terms. So that whole denominator needs to go into each numerator. So now we have cosine alpha, cosine beta over sine alpha, cosine beta, plus sine alpha, sine beta over sine alpha, cosine beta. All right. So now we see that cosine beta can cancel in the first one, sine alpha can cancel in the second one. That leaves us with cosine alpha over sine alpha plus sine beta over cosine beta. Cosine over sine is cotangent. Alpha and then sine over cosine is tangent. And then that's beta. Could you just scroll back up for me, please? And all where you, where you wrote everything in red. Uh, you talking about right here or all the way? Tell me where to start. Right, yeah, right there. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. No, down a little more. I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. I think I just missed something. Keep going down. Yeah, right. All that in red right there. Just right here. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. There was a, oh, yeah, I thought it was tangent. Okay, we'll do tangent last. It's minus.
All right, so those are your cosine and sine, sum and difference formulas. All right, so we're going to find the exact value of sine 7 power over 12 using the fact that 7 power over 12 is equal to power over 3 plus power over 4. So they pretty much gave us the breakdown that we can use. All right, so looking at sine of seven pi over 12, gonna break that up into sine power three plus power four. All right. Yeah, so we got sine power over three, cosine power over four plus cosine power over three, sine power over four. All right, so sine power over three. Square root of three over two. Cosine power over four, square root of two over two. Cosine power over three, one half. And square root of two over two, the sine power over four. So very similar to what we had last time. Oh, there should be a four down there. Questions on the process. Could you go back up to uh, before the summer sum and difference formulas? To right here? Yeah.
Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Any other questions before we look at another problem? Not yet. <laughs> All right, suppose that sine alpha is 12 over 13 for quadrant two, angle alpha. Sine beta is three over five for quadrant one, angle beta. Find the exact value for each. So it was sine beta, sine alpha, okay? Okay, so in this situation, what we want to do is find the missing sides. In uh, both cases, when it comes to sine, or the sine, I'll just leave it general. You know, sine of any angle is going to be y over r. So we'll look at them one at a time. Let's look at angle alpha first. So that's sine alpha is equal to 12 over 13. So as far as that information is concerned, uh, I'll write it like this. All right, so sine alpha is y over r. So we need to figure out what x is. So we'll go here, x squared, y squared, equal to r squared, x squared plus 12 squared equal to 13 squared. One forty four, one sixty nine, minus the one sixty nine. I mean, excuse me, one forty four. X uh, squared is equal to twenty five. Square root of both sides. X is equal to plus or minus five. Mm 
Now don't forget. I'm gonna turn it back up. I'm just making sure I look on the right angle. We are in quadrant two. So we're in quadrant two. That means your X. Uh, right. So in quadrant two, X is negative. So that means we will choose the negative five. All right, um, problems. Make sure we all right. If you go back up just a little bit. Uh, to, sorry, to the war problem. Go ahead to the war problem. And I didn't put up there and I was gonna put it after that. I probably should have put it first. They wanted us to find cosine alpha, so. So I'll put that um, right under there. As a matter of fact, I'll do this right here. Um, let's read it, let's go. Green right here. A is going to be fine cosine alpha. B is cosine beta, C cosine alpha plus beta. Okay. All right, now, all right. Uh, do we do another one? Okay, that's good enough. Let me start right here. So that's what we're looking for. We'll do A, B, and C. Find cosine alpha, cosine beta, then cosine alpha plus beta. So now that we have this, and of course this would be alpha, we have our negative five for X and cosine alpha. It's gonna be X over R. So it'd be negative five over 13. So that was A. All right. So let's look at angle beta. Want to do the same thing. And sine beta is three fifths. And just like before, this is y over r, which means y is equal to three r is equal to five and x is what we do not know. Find it the same way, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. x squared plus three squared equal to five squared. Uh, subtract nine. X squared equals 16. Square root. X is equal to plus or minus four. But we are in quadrant 
one, I believe. X is positive. So we will use the positive four. Right, so B asks us to find cosine theta, which is X over R, and so that's be four or five. Questions before we go to C. No. All right. C was cosine alpha plus. No. So we, yeah. Cosine alpha, cosine beta minus. Sine alpha, sine beta. So I guess I'll go ahead and rewrite all of my established pieces. Cosine alpha was negative five over 13. Sine alpha, 12 over 13, cosine beta, 4 over 5, sine beta, 3 over 5. So cosine alpha plus beta is going to be cosine alpha, which is negative 5 thirteenths times cosine beta, 4 fifths, plus, nope, not plus, minus sine alpha, which is 12 thirteenths, sine beta, 3 fifths, negative 20 over 65 minus 36 over 65 and that'd be a negative 56 over 65. All right, questions, questions, questions. Uh, another one we could do is just to make sure we're good regarding uh, substitution purposes. Sine alpha plus beta. All right, so sine alpha, cosine beta, plus cosine alpha, sine beta. So that's 12 over 13. Cosine beta is 4 over 5. 
cosine of a negative five thirteenths and sine beta three fifths. That'd be 48 over 65 minus 15 over 65. That'd be a 33 over Last thing out of this section. So, sum and difference formula for tangents, tan of alpha plus beta, tan alpha plus tan beta over one minus tan alpha tan beta, then tan alpha minus beta, tan alpha minus tan beta over one plus tan alpha tan beta. All right, so for this one, they ask us to verify and we'll use the difference formula for tangent. All right. See if we can make that left side look like the right side. No allowing X to be alpha power 4 to be beta, so that's tan x minus tan power 4, then 1 plus tan x times tan of power 4, tan of power 4, you know, power four is 45 degrees. Uh, remember that's sine over cosine. And remember for, pow for power four, 45 degrees, they both are the square root of two over two. So that ends up being one. Then it's one plus tan x times, once again, tan of power four is equal to one. So that's tan x minus one, one plus tan x. And 
missed it. Right. Questions, questions, questions. All right. So before we go, let's do at least one problem out of six point one. Just to reemphasize what we talked about. Let's see what's a good one. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have sine over one minus cotangent, then we have cosine over 10 minus one, and that equals to sine plus cosine. All right, so let's see, what can we do here? Um, so we want this left side like the right side. Do we want to combine them? Uh, can't hurt. So let's see if um, multiplying top, not top, but uh, both, trying to find a common denominator. Um, I don't think that'd be good for us. If I do one minus tangent. If I do cotangent, if I multiply top by my sign, no, that won't work. If I multiply both by cotangent, I cancel here, but give me cosine. So if I multiply by tangent. Okay, so let's try bringing them together. Doing a common denominator. So if I go this route, and this is just me trying something that I've done this problem before, but gotta try something, right? So, Try bringing these together using the um, LCD of both of the denominators. Mm -hmm. One plus one minus. All right. 
So now when I multiply these two. Okay, so I have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right there where you have sine theta and then in parentheses you have tangent theta minus one. How okay. did you get that? Uh, what I decided to do was I'm going to try to bring these together. And I decided to make my LCD a combination of both of my denominators. So I had one minus cotangent in the denominator. So in order to make it this common denominator, I need to multiply both sides, I mean both top and bottom by this. Same thing as if I had uh, one third plus one over two, and I decide that my LCD is six. So I will multiply, and you know, six is a combination of just three times two. So I already have three of my first denominators, so I have to multiply both top and bottom by two in order to get that denominator. And then I have to multiply both top and bottom here by three in order to get the denominator. And so that's what I did here. I multiplied top and bottom by tan theta minus one. And then in the other one, I multiplied top and bottom by one minus cotangent theta. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see if this is going to help me out. I'm going to go ahead and I multiply this. It's going to be tan theta. Minus one. And cotan, that'll be a plus one. All right, let's do it like this so you can see what I'm doing. So let me just plan it with my head. All right, so if I take this, just seeing if this denominator is going to cancel out for me, because you notice in the, um, on the right, we don't have a denominator at all. So if I distribute that, that would be tan theta, then one times negative one is negative one, then cotangent times tangent is negative one, negative cotangent times tangent negative one, and then I have a negative cotangent times one, so it's going to be a cotangent, so it'd be two, no, it didn't cancel out like a one to two, so I may have to if I multiply this by the conjugate. It's going to be one. cotangent and negative cotangent and cotangent squared. And I should be able to do my Pythagorean identity. Okay, so that may be where I have to go. All right, so scratch this, because I saw it didn't work for me. And like I said, when you're doing a problem for the first time or you're doing these type of problems um, for the first time in a long time, you may try something and it don't work for you. So what I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. All right, and so the conjugate, if you're talking about the conjugate of one minus cotangent theta, that's one plus cotangent theta. All right, so if I do that, that's one times one. Then when we do our distribution, then one times cotangent. And here, negative cotangent, and that'll be negative cotangent squared. Be 
Please cancel. One minus cotangent squared. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Oh, well, I hope it works. We'll see. All right. So that's one minus cotangent squared. And then on top, mm, I was hoping I was going to get a plus. Anyway, we'll work it out. So we're looking at sine, theta. And then here, distribute, got to be sine. And then, let's see, it's sine. Okay. Oh, I just don't have room to do what I want to do. This is why I need a board. All right, so that would be sine, cosine. I mean, cotangent. And then sine cotangent is cosine over sine. So my sines will cancel. And that'll leave me with sine theta plus cosine in that numerator. I didn't expect this problem to be that long. I just chose a problem out of the back book. Um, in terms of showing work on this one, there's simply no one, three, four, five, triangle relationship perceptible. Oh, you're talking about for that one previous? Yes, that was that was fine. If you, Because uh, some things you may need to sh not to show work from, but I always show all the work just in case uh, you run across one that you don't know uh, the relationship for. And being a ditch digger for a living is starting to look more and more attractive. <laughs> <laughs> where all of the problems that you get won't be this involved. I just picked a random problem out of the back that, you know, so I was just, <laughs> I was just fishing for what. And uh, so, but uh, all of them won't be this, this involved. So this is that first fraction that we're looking at. And so let's look at the second fraction. <laughs> we got cosine of tan theta minus one. So I'm going to take that one. I said cosine of what? Cosine of theta and then tan theta minus one. And I'm gonna try multiplying this top and bottom by the conjugate. And so that's tan squared theta doing your distribution. And then that'll be plus tan. It's a math evident when he said I was hoping to get a positive, but let's move on. <laughs> and then the negative and negative. So that'll be a negative tan minus one. And then that's cosine theta tan theta plus cosine theta. So tan and tan will cancel in the middle, down bottom. And cosine theta is sine theta or cosine. So those cosines will cancel. And I'm looking at tan theta minus one on bottom. Oh. Sine theta plus cosine theta over tan squared theta minus one. So double sine plus, okay. Uh, 
one minus cos that. I think I went over the river and through the woods. Let me see, so I got this, I just got my sine plus cosine, but I need to get rid of those denominators, so cotangent, no sine squared, sine squared. My Pythagorean won't work there. Um, no, I don't want to do that because it'll take me back to where I was. Nope, you guys haven't gone over that formula yet. Cause I could break them down to degrees, but that won't help y'all. Um, 10 squared, so if I turn that, subtract secant squared. That will give me a two down bottom. If I were to do that cotangent, subtract one. Yeah, that one give me a two down bottom as well. So I don't want to do that. Hmm. I, I think I we're back to it. Rich's original question of it's not going to tell us if we're right or not. It's the, we're there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I think. <laughs> no, I can't do it that way. Uh, you know what? I think where I did wrong. I see what I did wrong. All right, I got to double back. But you know, this is what happens when you do this stuff, man. You, you uh, I guess you live and you learn. So let's go back. I see what I could have done. Sine over one minus cotangent. And then it was minus cosine over tangent theta minus one. Let me see. Go back, cosine over tan, theta minus one, sine over one minus cotangent. Okay, sine. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna look at this denominator. Rewrite cotangent. That's cosine over sine. One, just one over one, so if I wanna combine that, Sine over sine minus cosine over sine. And I'm hoping this works. So that's sine minus cosine over sine. All right, so that's the denominator for that one. And then do the same thing for tangent. And theta minus one is a uh, sine over cosine minus one. So that's gonna be sine over cosine minus cosine over cosine. That's gonna be sine theta minus cosine over cosine. All right, so if that is the case, I'm looking at sine All right. Still think I'm missing the easier route, but that's okay. So now if I were to multiply both top and bottom by sine, I'm trying to simplify this. This will multiply top and bottom by cosine. This sine will cancel, this cosine will cancel. 
and I have sine squared theta over sine minus cosine minus cosine squared theta over sine minus cosine. If I can write All right, so I can bring them together. See if that helps me at all. Yeah, all right, I think I'm going somewhere now. I'm trying to think, well, I wonder if I could have did this earlier. Okay, so now I can factor this. It is a difference of squares. I wonder if I could have did that a long time ago. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm thinking now. I could have did difference of squares right here. Anyway. All right. So stuff just hit me now. So anyway, now that's going to be sine theta. I'll break it down this way. Sine theta plus cosine theta. Sine theta minus cosine theta. And that's all over sine cosine theta and the quantity of sine minus cosine will cancel leaving me with sine theta plus cosine theta which is what i needed finally got there so, yep. so i didn't plan on picking a problem that long uh like i said i just put, chose a random one and uh, it took us on a little bit of a journey. But uh, we got home. We got home. So with that being said, you see how I tried something. You know, I, I tried a problem right in front of you organically. And you see how I tried a method and it didn't get me anywhere and I did, he needed to double back. And it's possible if I tried the difference of squares somewhere up here, it may have helped me out. But I didn't think about it till I got right here. And that's because that's what I actually saw you know, light at the end of the tunnel. So um, try this stuff out, you know, and if you have any problems or questions, you know, coming out of a 6-1 or 6-2, then uh, we'll address those questions first on next class. Uh, even if it's no more than you just pulling problems out of, like I said, either whether it be my math lab or going to your exercises in the back, like I, uh, in the back of the sections, just like I did for 6-1, and you want to see that, uh, just let me know. And uh, we can do them. All right. Any questions or concerns before we close? <laughs> the laugh, the laugh. You, pro you probably don't have enough time for all the questions I have. <laughs> well, with that being said, if anybody have any, um, uh, want to uh, hit me in the Zoom, you know, individually or something like that, or time outside of class, that door is always open as well. Just shoot me an email. We'll figure it out if we can work it out through our schedules. And um, I've been doing it with other, you know, students and everything like that. So, yeah, man. Uh, if you want to meet outside of class, just let me know and we can uh, make that happen. So, with that being said, you guys have a good one. Be safe. Uh, have a great weekend. And I will see you on Tuesday. Take care. All right, you do the same.